Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve House Robber 3. I know I solved House Robber 1 before. I skipped House Robber 2 for now. I might come back to it at some point, but I really like House Robber 3, so I'm going to solve it today. So we are given... So we're given a binary tree in this case, and you can read the story about the thief who just wants to maximize their profit, basically. And each of these nodes in the tree represents a house, let's say. And the restriction is we want to rob the maximum amount from this tree. The only restriction is if we rob this node, right, the root node, then we're not allowed to rob any adjacent nodes. Notice how we have two adjacent nodes, right? Basically, this one's children, right? So if we rob this, we're not allowed to rob these two, right? But we're definitely allowed to rob these two because they're not adjacent. By adjacent, we basically mean that there's an edge connecting them, right? So since there's no edge connecting this three with this three, we can rob both of them. And we can also rob this one. We can't rob these two. If we rob it like this, we get a profit of seven. Now, what's our other choice? Well, if we if we skip this house, right, we don't rob this house, we're definitely allowed to rob this and we're definitely allowed to rob this, but then we can't rob these two children, right? So then we get a profit of five. Clearly the other way with a profit of seven is the greatest. So that's the way we're gonna rob it. You can see that that's what they explained to us in the explanation. So our, so our output is going to be seven. That's the max amount we can rob without robbing adjacent houses. Now let's look at a different example. Now with the solution to this problem, you can really get bogged down in like the details of, okay, if I rob this, then I got to skip these two, right? And I can, I'm allowed to rob this. And there's a lot of ways to brute force this problem. There's a lot of ways to have conditions and edge cases, but let's look at, look, let's look at a simple way to analyze this problem. Basically, we have two cases, right? One case, one case is where we include the root. So I'm going to call that case with root. So we have two cases. One is with root. So basically we're trying to rob the max amount from this tree. One case is we include the root. So we're definitely including this root. Now, how does that affect the way we can rob the rest of the tree? Basically, it tells us we have to skip this node and we have to skip this node. We, we have no other restrictions. Those are the only restrictions if we decide that we want to include this root. So that's one way we can rob it, right? One case is we include this root and that affects how we can rob the rest of the tree. The second case we have is without the root. So that's our second and last case. We only have two cases. So the case means that we are going to rob the max amount from this tree where we definitely do not include this node. We're skipping this node. What? How does that affect the way we can rob the rest of the tree? Well, there's no restrictions now, right? We can just take the max amount from this tree and the max amount from this tree. We're, we, we're not required to skip these two nodes anymore, right? We have no restrictions now. Now, we can decide to skip this node, right? We can decide to skip it or we can, uh, we can keep it or we can skip it, right? We have no restrictions. There are some cases where even though we skipped this node, we might still want to skip this node to maximize the profit because look at this. This is a hundred. I can either rob this house and skip this, or I can rob this house and skip that, right? But the, the main thing is when we go without the root where we do not include this root, we are in charge. We have, we can make those choices. With that being said, the solution to this problem is a depth first search solution, which runs O of n time, meaning we only have to visit every single node at most one time, right? So that's pretty efficient, but the only difficulty is that there are going to be some modifications we have to make to this depth first search, specifically that we, for each node here, right, we're going to be returning a pair of values, right? We're going to be returning two values, right? And those two values are going to be for, let's say, this subtree. What's the max profit we can get with the root, including this node? What's the max profit we can get without the root, basically not including this node? Right. And so we're going to be returning that pair of values up and up until we get to the root where then we will basically have our result, right? We'll have, once we get to the root, 
we'll have two values, A and B, one that has the max we can get with the root, one that has the max we can get without the root, and then we're basically gonna return the maximum of these two values, right? Whatever happens to be the scenario where we can rob the maximum amount. That's gonna be the result that we return, and we can do that in linear time. So first, we're gonna start at the root like any other depth first search. We want our pair of values, right? But before we can get that, we're gonna call depth first search on the left child, right? And of course, depth first search on the right child. This is gonna be post order traversal, basically. So let's run depth first search on here. To do that, we need to run depth first search on its children, right? Now you can see that the right child is null, right? It's empty. So what's going to be the maximum we can rob with and without root for a null tree? Well, just zero, zero, right? That's pretty basic, right? For an empty tree, we can't rob anything. It's going to be zero, zero. Okay, so let's look at this node now, right? The, the Another base case. Now, it doesn't have any children, right? So we can say that those are zero, zero as well. So but that's not so important because this is basically the base case as well, right? So what's going to be the max we can rob including this node, including this 100, right? That's the first value, remember? So that's going to be 100 in our pair, right? If we include this and then you know, we don't have any subtrees, we can get 100. Now, what's the max we can do without this node? If we decide not to rob from here, well, we'd get zero. Now, there's probably not any reason we'd want to do that, but this is important. So now we have the pair of values from here that we're going to return up to this node, and we have the pair of values from here that we're going to return up to this node as well. Okay, so next, let's look at this node, right? So now we've called our way up back to this node, so we want the pair of values for this node. So first, let's get with root. How can we compute that? Well, we're going to take this value, right? So with root for that node 20, right? We're going to take its own value, right? So 20 plus we want the we want the maximum from its left subtree, right? But not including the 100, right? Because remember, if we rob this 20, right, we're not allowed to rob its direct child. So what's the max we can rob from this subtree where we don't include 100? Well, you can see that value is right here, right? Remember, the second value represents without root. So that value is just zero, so we add zero. Exact The exact same is true for its right subtree, which is just an empty subtree, right? So zero, right? We're taking the value 20 and adding the maximum from its left and right subtree where they do not include the roots, meaning they do not include the direct children. So we total this up and we just get 20, right? So that makes sense, right? When you look at the picture, so we're going to put a 20 here because when you take a look at this entire subtree, right, if we included this node 20, the max we could rob then is 20 because we're not allowed to rob any of its children. Basically, what's the max we could do without the root, meaning if we decided not to include this 20, what's the max we could do then? Well, to do that, so basically where we're not including this node, so we cannot add it, we just want to look at its left and right subtrees and get the maximum of those. So from its left, we want to get the max of the pair, right? Pair left. So whatever the left returned, and we want to add it with the max that the right returned, right? So it's a little messy, but this is basically what we're doing, right? The max of the left and the max of the right. So now what is the max of the left subtree? What's the maximum we could possibly rob from here? Well, that value is right here, right? 100. We want to take the max of both of these. This one is zero, so we're going to take 100. And what about the right subtree? Well, that's just an empty subtree, so the only thing we can get from that is zero. So basically, when you total this up, you get 100. What that means is we can put 100 here for the second value because for this node, right, for this entire subtree, what we're trying to say is if we do not include the root without the root, we don't include this 20, what's the max we could rob from this entire tree? Well, it's only 100, right? Okay, so now basically what we've done is we've gotten these two, so now that we've computed basically what we wanted for this tree, we're almost ready to handle the root case, which we want to do. But let's start with this right subtree first, right? So we want to compute a pair of values for here, right? But to do that, let's look at its children. So its left 
subtree is empty, what that's going to end up returning is just a pair of 0, 0. What about its right subtree? Well, we're going to do the same thing we did before. If we decide to include this root, clearly we don't have any subtree. So the max we could get with that, so the first value in the pair is going to be 1, right? With root is going to be 1. Without the root, if we do not include this root, what's the max we could rob from this subtree? Well, it would be 0, right? Because it doesn't even have any children. So now let's let's call back up recursively to this node 4. So what's the max we could rob with the root if we decided to rob this 4? Well, then we're not allowed to rob either of its children and it doesn't have any nodes below its children. So the max we could rob doing that would be 4 with the root is going to be 4 without the root. So if we decided not to rob this node, we want to get the max of its left, which is 0, and the max of its right, which is 1. Add those together, we get 1. And so basically without the root, the case where we do not rob this node is going to be 1. Okay, so now we're finally ready to handle the root case, right? We're finally ready to handle what the max we could rob with and without the root node because we have this part and we have this part. So how do we compute with root? Okay, with root means we're including this node, right? So we're going to take 3 plus... Right, so we're inc including this node, and then we want the maximum of the left subtree not including 20, right? But luckily for us, we already computed that in this value, right? So the max of the left subtree without including its direct left child is 100, right? So that's the left portion, right? What we're saying is we're robbing this, skipping this, and then robbing this 100, right? Okay, great. Now we want the max of the right subtree, right? Not including this 4. Luckily for us, that value is stored right here, right? That value is going to be returned back up to here. That's how we're, get, how we're going to get it in the code. So that's a 1, right? So we're adding a 1 to here. And what that basically means is we're robbing this 3, skipping this node, and then robbing this 1, which we're allowed to do, right? Because there's, there's nothing connecting those nodes. So basically the total with the root 3 is going to be 104. So that's the first value that goes in our pair. Now technically we also need to make sure that this is the greatest value. So we're going to compute the max without the root, right? The max value we can get when we do not include this 3. So basically we're not allowed to compute we're not allowed to rob this three, so we want the max that we can get from the left tree without any restrictions, right? Which, what we're going to do is take a look at this, this pair of values. What's the max of them? It's not 20. The max is 100, right? So then, to our result, we're going to take 100, right? Now, we want the same thing from the right subtree, right? Where there's no restrictions, right? So we're taking a look at this pair of values, 4 and 1. Which one of them is greater? Well, it's 4, right? So basically, what I'm saying is, we're, even though we skipped this node, the root node, we're also skipping this because if we skip this, it allows us to rob this node we're we're also going to be robbing this and skipping this one so i'm taking 104 and adding them together i'm getting 104 so i'm going to put 104 over here so look how both of these values are 104 what that tells us is if we include the root with the root we, there's a way we can the max we can rob is 104 right and what does that look like it's this plus this plus this right and the second value tells us if we don't include the root without the root, we can still get 104 a different way. We take this 100, rob it, and rob this 4, right? So that's kind of weird. There's two different ways to get the same result. But either way, we know that the maximum we can rob from this entire tree is going to be 104. So that's the result that we can return. With that being said, now let me show you what the code looks like, and it's not too difficult because we know that this is just a modified depth first search. So I'm going to define a depth first search function nested inside of this function, even though I probably don't need to do that. But what I'm going to do is remember this is going to return a pair of values. What that pair is going to be is with root, right? The max we can rob with the root and the max we can rob without the root. Okay, so great. With any depth first search, we want to start with the base case. So if the root is null, what are we going to decide to return with an empty tree? You can't rob anything. So for the entire pair, I'm going to say 0, 0. 
Otherwise, now I'm going to do our recursive call, right? I'm going to run the max we can rob on the left subtree. So I'm going to call depth for search on root.left. It's going to return a pair of values. I'm going to put that in left pair. I'm going to do the exact same thing with the right subtree. So in right pair, I'm going to store the result of the max we can rob from the right subtree. It's going to be a pair of values with root and without root of the left subtree and right subtree. So now I want to return the max we can rob with root and without root, right? Where we're currently at, right? Where we're at the node that we're currently traversing. So first I have to compute this pair before I can return it. Now, how can I compute with root? Well, since we're including the root, we know at least one value is root.val. And what other values are we going to add? Well, we're going to take the left pair and get the second value from it and the right pair and get the second value from it. Why are we getting the second value at index one? Well, when you look at what this function is returning, it's returning two values with root and without root. Remember, if we include the root value, we're not allowed to include the root value of the left and right subtree. So we're getting the max we can do without those two nodes. Okay, great. Now the only thing left for us to do is compute without the root. So in this case, we're not allowed to include this root.val. So I'm going to, I'm going to delete that. And so since we're not including the root value, there's no restrictions on what we can get from the left and right subtree. So what I want is the max we can rob from the left subtree. It could be either of the values in the pair. So I'm just going to take the maximum of the left pair. It could be it could be the value with the root. It could be the value without the root. We don't know. So I'm not going to make any guesses. I'm just going to take the maximum of that pair. And I'm going to do the exact same thing with the right pair. So I'm going to take the max of the right pair. This, this computation is actually giving us what the max we can rob without the current node that we're at. It's as easy as this. And the reason it's so easy, right, I'm making it look easy, is because we modified our depth for a search not to return one value, but it's returning a pair of values. That's really the key here. We're returning two values. That makes it so easy for us. So now we're actually done with our function. We computed these two values and returned these two values. Now all we have to do is call our depth for search function, passing in the root, right? But we know even this depth for search call is going to return two values. And we want the max of those two values because we want the max that we can rob from this tree. So once I compute that max, then all I have to do is return it. We're returning a single value here. So when you take a look, it's a very efficient algorithm. There are other ways to solve this with dynamic programming and stuff, but they all actually have the same time complexity, big O of N. So I think that this solution is the easiest. There's no need to overcomplicate a problem like this with like dynamic programming techniques. So I think just doing the depth for search way is the best. It's super efficient and it's hopefully understandable. So I hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It supports the channel a lot and I'll hopefully see you pretty soon.